On this week's episode of Big Blue Mouth Off, we get all emotional about selling drugs. Welcome back to another episode of Big Movie Mouth Off. I'm your host, Jimmy Martin. Welcome to the show. and I'm your co-host, Jeff Counts. Thanks for having me back. Hey, man. I think you got a cot in the back, too. Yeah. Everybody's got a cot in the back, so yeah. it's fine with me. I'm going to move in a little fridge, if that's okay. <laughs> we already got one. Oh, but, I, you, but it says Jimmy on it. It does. It does. Okay. The whole thing does. Uh, welcome to the episode. Uh, on this episode, we will be reviewing, later in the episode, Disney Pixar's Inside Out. Uh, in between the reviews, we have uh, interviews with the cast of Max, the good old Warner Brothers dog film. And But before we do that, we are going to review Dope. Uh, this actually was a Sundance movie at the 2015 Sundance. Are you sure? I couldn't tell. Yeah, uh, you could tell. Yeah. You could tell. Uh, and so, basically, it's, it stars, um, I'd say an unknown cast. No one really knows most of these people. Uh, but the star of the film is Malcolm, who actually, he plays an African-American who lives in the, uh, well, Inglewood. Yeah. Not the greatest area, probably, ever. Pretty uh, bad part of L.A. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, uh, and lives there, wants to get out, wants to go to Harvard. Good student. Straight he's, A's. Yeah, he's definitely smart enough yeah. to set that up from the start. Uh, geek. Yeah. Definitely a geek. Uh, you know, he, he rides his bike everywhere with his friends, which, again, I will always point out, I love films where they show their friends ride their bikes everywhere. Yeah. Uh, does that. Well, he kind of gets involved with a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. Uh well, and I see involved, he just, basically the drug dealer wants him to go talk to a girl for him. Right. And then what leads to that, he's like, well, yeah, you can come to my birthday party. Well, he goes to that. Well, the whole drug deal goes down. Shots are fired. Yeah. And then one thing leads to another, and Malcolm finds a bag, uh, his backpack filled with dough and a handgun. Yeah. And so... Which belonged to the drug dealer. Yep. Who's afraid to talk to girls. I just, That's true. Yeah, I just... That's that true. <laughs> so, uh, so what leads to that is... Um, well, Malcolm gets kind of spirals into a, the world of drug dealing yeah. and has to sell the drugs or basically they're going to kill him and his entire family. He's got to get himself out of a jam, basically. Yeah. yeah. And and that's kind of, that's the story, essentially. You know, pretty simple, try to the point. Um, my thing with this film is it starts off rock solid. Very much so. I mean, like, really good. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, you, you get this great character who gets involved. I mean, you, you want, you like him. Yeah, no, you really like this guy, and you can totally he, want him to succeed. Yep, you want to. He gets him. picked on at school, like he's not the cool kid, you know. And you're kind of like, I mean, maybe I just relate to him or something, yeah. you know, because I'm a geek. We should talk about why he gets picked on because it's important. Because this movie's got a four star soundtrack. No matter oh, what yeah. else we say about it, the soundtrack is perfect. And it's because, Phenomenal. It's because he and his friends, his two friends, are obsessed with '90s early hip hop culture. Yep. So they dress like it, they listen to He's it. He's got the flat use... top, like, kid and play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, they use all the language and the lingo from that time. So yep. that's part of the reason why they get picked on a lot. Yep. Yeah. And so from from that, though, like I said, it, it starts good. Yeah. And then out of some, like, right around 30, 40 minutes into it, it just takes a turn. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're watching, like, Instagram videos and Twitter pop-ups. It's like a pop-up video. Remember that on VH1? Yeah. And I'm like, what? Where the hell did this come from? Yeah. Like, I get like they're trying to get that, you know. Well, first, up to date feel, you know, for the for for the for the kiddies. Yeah. But then it's also trying to be nostalgic. And I'm like, yeah, but your first thirty minutes had nothing to do with this. No, there are several of those shifts in register where the tone changes. And yeah. They, I don't think it's like some grand artistic statement where he's trying to pull some eclectic thing into yeah, yeah. this movie making. I just think he's not really sure what he's trying to say yeah. or how to say it mm-hmm. because it doesn't feel natural. Yep. It just pulls you out for a second. Then you go back in because the characters are so likable. Yep. But it's definitely a problem. And, and then like you get out of this little moment of, of you know Instagram videos and stuff like that. And yeah. then they start introducing some more characters yeah. who are not as likable in yeah. the sense. Like in fact are quite boring. And but you still had your core group. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, okay, I like you guys, but like who's this new guy and I don't like this and and it just kind of, to me, just it gets derailed. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, like, man, like if we were just in the first 30 minutes and that movie had concluded there, four stars. Oh, yeah. I would have been all about it. But yeah. then, like I said, the second half just it derails, goes off the tracks. I have no idea what's going on anymore. I just, I mean, I found myself getting really bored. Yeah, it gets silly. It gets, there's some old tropes in there, like when he explains how he pulled off the scheme at yeah. the end and they keep cutting back to moments you already saw. But now well, you've got this wisdom and you understand them better. That's been done a million that, times. That was actually my first... That, that was the incident. I just now remembered it. There's yeah. a part where uh, one of their friends or whatever gets shot. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it cuts to and like he's like, how did that happen? And he goes... Yeah. Like that. And it's like, hey, what's up, Quentin Tarantino? Like I'm just like... Yeah. That's, that's done a thousand times. But then you're talking to the, also the end where it's like, I was always one step ahead of you kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm like, it's done. It's played out. 
it, so it would work if it was meant as a mashup. Like I'm going to make fun of or pay homage to all these different yeah. tropes and styles, but I don't think there's that much no. like, directed energy behind it. It seems more random to no, me. No, I you know I like the actors, yeah. uh, but that's I mean the actors and the soundtrack. The soundtrack is are what saved this film. So great. And <laughs> Shamik Moore, the main character, is yeah. really likable. You want him to make it to the end. Yeah, All right. and that dude, he's a great actor. Yeah, like I was like, you know, there's been rumors uh, about uh, Sony actually changing Spider-Man up, and I'm like, dude, Miles Morales, right there. Yeah, do it. Like, he's, he's a good. little dude too, so yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got the little frame. He'd be yeah. great as a Spider-Man. He would. He would. But uh, but yeah, it's it's the music and it's the and him and the yep. and his and his mates that save the film. Yeah, I'm at about two and a half stars. Yeah, I'm two and a half. I I was thinking more two two stars earlier today yeah. when I was on my way here. But I think the soundtrack is so strong, and the the first half of the movie, I, well, maybe third of a movie, yeah. is good enough that I'm gonna go with two and a half. I just, and I guess it's more like I mean, maybe as time goes on, I get more, I guess, angry. Yeah. Because how much I was loving that film, yeah. and all of a sudden, and and I was why, just like, why so, man. why so sloppy at the end? Why so? It's like I, maybe they ran out of money, maybe they just had to rush things. I don't know, but like. It didn't work for me. It didn't feel like Sundance movie at the beginning. It did at the end. Oh, yeah. It felt oh, like a easily. movie for critics. Yeah. I was waiting for like the, the lights to come up and the director being at the front yeah. of the screen being like, who wants to ask a question? And by the way, <laughs> America does not agree with us in terms of the critical opinion on this movie. It, Don't care. It's going nuts <laughs> for this film. Don't care. I want to see more from the guy. I just yeah. want to see him tone it in a little, you know, like honing it a little bit better. You mean the director or the actor? Both. Yeah. Both. I'm with you on that. So there you have it. Uh, two and a half stars each. Dope. If anything, go to iTunes and download the soundtrack because that's where it's at. Yeah, or I'm, I think I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. So there you have it. All right, coming up next, I'm going to interview the cast of Max. And then after that, we're going to talk Disney's Pixar Inside Out. Mad Max? No, just Max. Oh. <laughs> it's very nice to meet both of you. It's nice to meet you too. So, Boaz, what inspired you to tell this tale? I had been wanting to tell a story about a dog for quite a while. Um, I wanted to tell a story that, because I love dogs, mm -hmm. and I find that our ability to relate to dogs can sometimes take away a lot of the inhibitions and walls that we have when we deal with people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that could be a really interesting thing to do. And my friend Sheldon, who I co-wrote it with, is an ex-Marine mm -hmm. who has dogs. And when I spoke to him about it, he really wanted to explore that aspect of the story. Sure. And we took it into that direction. Josh, uh, what was your training like to work with the animals on set, and kind of how fast did you bond with yeah. them? Well, my uh, my dad is a canine handler, and well, so helps. I went, yeah, yeah, helps a lot. <laughs> I went to um, his facility, and him and his um, colleagues kind of, like, I ran with the dogs and kind of handled them, and that uh, helped a lot. But um, before we shot, I got to go to the... Um, Farm, I guess they call it the farm. Yeah, the facility where we train yeah, the dogs. Yeah, where they train the dogs. And um, I mean, I've always been a dog lover, and I'm, I felt like we, I bonded with the dogs pretty easily and pretty fast. And uh, the trainers, yeah, the trainers know, like, you know, they're very good to work with. Like, they know when and when not to, like, you know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but as obviously, the, the animals are in good hands. But how do you film a scene to make it look like it's, it's like a vicious dog attack? It's all the trainers. Yeah. The trainers, you know, you interact with the trainers, you explain the scene, they let you know what you can do and what you can't do. Mm -hmm. And it is a learning process that you have to figure out pretty quickly in terms of how, what kind of angles you can use, what kind of shots you can make, and how it then intercuts into the story. That's, that's really the process. Sure. What's the most challenging aspect of working with animals on set? One of the, um, I mean, it's hard because whenever you're, in the middle of a shot and the dog may not do something right, they can't stop the take every time. Mm -hmm. So they'll correct the dog like in the middle of the scene. And so you're doing your lines and in the background it's like Sid, like Stand Josh down. had to re record a lot of yeah, his dialogue. Because there were a lot of scenes yeah. with really emotional stuff yeah. where all you heard was Sid, 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 shh, shh, shh. And Josh just had to keep talking. Four hours. My actually my first dog as a child was named Max. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious if you guys have pets. And if so, what do you have? And does their names have any significance or meaningful? I have three dogs. I have a Rottweiler, a Black Lab, who we found on the street, and uh, a little Ch Chowini, a Chihuahua and a meter dog mix. <laughs> um, the Rottweiler's name is Shotzi, because that's, she's, you know, Rottweilers are German. And it's my little treasure in German. But Rocky, my brother found him, and my brother's like an MMA person, and so he named him Rocky. And then Tyrion is, I don't know. <laughs> Just, <laughs> nice. What is your, I, you'd say Max, but it'd be the easy way to go. Right. What is your favorite uh, dog that's ever been on television or, or a movie? My favorite dog that's ever been a movie 
is the German Shepherd in the first hills have eyes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. That's a the good one, one who lives. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the classics, like the old yeller, right? There you go. Why not? There you go. Well, nice to meet both of you. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's nice to meet both of you. You too. First of all, I have to say early happy birthday to you. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> sure, birthday. let's just <laughs> throw that it? in. How old are you going to be? Oh, old. wow. <laughs> old. Your father, I read, uh, was actually in the military and wounded, and which is very similar to your character. How did that help you mold your performance? It, it actually even goes farther than that. My dad passed away um, three years ago, and, you know, but my dad, you know, served initially in World War II, but then was involved in, in you know, in Vietnam and, and, and was retired way before Desert Storm and all of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my dad, he, it, it's weird because I watched it with a, with, with a friend last week and she turned to me and she was like, I could really see your dad being that way, mm -hmm. you know, because my dad was a very, a pretty taciturn guy, but, but also, you know, could be, you could, the, the emotional guidance that, that, that I think that Ray sort of, you know, helps Josh's character with, I think it's, it's inherent. Sure. And Lauren, what was your initial attraction to the project? I was a fan of Thomas, a fan of Boaz, the director's work. Mm -hmm. And for me, it felt like uh, a little step outside of what I normally do, which is playing like a sassy, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. And um, to get to play kind of a different kind of woman. I have a lot of family from the South and um, in fact came across some people it, when we were shooting in North Carolina who knew my grandfather who's oh, nice. a preacher. And um, <laughs> so it just kind of spoke to that that side of me and, and, uh, and I thought it was just a beautifully told story. What's the most challenging aspect to working with an animal on set? It's just working with an animal. I mean, it's, 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 it's just... You just nailed it. Yeah. It's, right. it's, you know, it's these are incredibly smart working dogs who, on the one hand, you, you feel kind of they love to, uh, you know, achieve a, a, a clear goal. And um, on the other hand, you can't explain to them, you know, they need to step into their light. So um, it, just, it just takes a little while, and you have to be consistent, you know, so that whatever the animals take that's best, you know, that's that's probably what they're going to use, so. Both of you have really great long-standing careers. Is there still that one project out there that you just kind of want to get onto and? I want to be on Friends. Is that still on? <laughs> They'll do a movie soon. Okay. <laughs> For me, Grapes of Wrath. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm, now at this point, I'm a good 25 years too old to, uh, to play Tom Joad. So maybe, you know, old Tom Joad. <laughs> Not really great for that, just old Tom Joad. Uh, that's um, a good name Uncle for Tom a movie. Joad. Yes, great. <laughs> My first dog as a kid was actually named Max. And I was uh -huh. curious if you guys have uh, pets, and if so, uh, what are they and what's their names and do they have any This is going to be a rough day because my <laughs> dog is not with us Aww. anymore. I know. It's okay. But I had a, an amazing dog named Hannah. I did not name her that. I got her from a German Shepherd rescue. But these dogs did sort of remind me, you know, they have that German Shepherd intelligence and, and I, it's always been my favorite dog. So, mm -hmm. um, someday. My very first dog was named Tuffy <laughs> and then we had a dog named Ginger. Um, those are both long, long. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just a ranch cat yeah. guy. Without saying Max, that's the easy go answer. Who is your favorite dog that's ever been on television or a film? Old Yeller. Lassie. I remember like my first obsession with um, uh, with uh, what is that dog Brand, uh, breed? Lassie. Collie. Yeah. Collies. Collies. Yeah, that was my first like you know dog crush. Yeah. Was Lassie. <laughs> so Lassie and Old Yeller. Cool. Yeah. Old like, Yeller. <laughs> just because he, he fought a mountain lion. Oh, it's so <laughs> sad though that movie. Welcome back to Big Movie Mouth Off. It was fun talking to the cast of Max. Be sure to go check out Max uh, if you like dog movies because we haven't had one in a while. Uh, there was Beethoven and Bingo and Benji, but now we got Max. Don't forget so. Marley. Well, Marley died. Don't go see Marley. <laughs> Don't go see Marley. Because we're talking about crying. All right, talk, <laughs> it's, it's Disney's Pixar's Inside Out. Uh, basically, this is Pete Doctor's third Pixar film. Uh, he did uh, Monsters, Inc., Up, and now Inside Out. Side reference. Guy knows how to make a grown man cry in a theater. Tough ears. <laughs> so the story is uh, Riley is an 11 year old girl who is moving from Minnesota to San Francisco. Uh, and whereas that sounds like a very simple plot, what's not so simple about it is that the whole film basically takes place in her mind. 
and you meet her five emotions that makes up Riley's behavior. You've got joy, voiced by Amy Poehler. Perfect. Sadness, voiced by Phyllis Smith. More perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Disgust, which is Mindy. Always forget her name. Kayleen. Kayleen. Uh, you've got fear, which is Bill Hader. Perfect. And I think of all the you know, or all the casting, the most perfect casting in a long time is anger. By Lewis Black, comedian <laughs> Lewis Black, so who funny. even when he's, if you know Lewis Black, when he gets mad, he's just a little fidgety thing, and just really mad like that. The guy does it too. Yeah. Anger does it too inside Riley's head. They drew that character for him. Oh, he, yeah, I think it's and his, everyone, <laughs> everyone's so good. It's true. So uh, the the story is again is that, and so you find out uh, basically the psychology of an eleven year old because what happens is is one thing leads to another. Joy doesn't really know Sadness's purpose in Riley's head. She's like, why would we want you around? Like, you're, you just ruin everything, you yeah, know? Yeah, she kind of is annoyed by her, but she's Joy, so she can't get that annoyed. Exactly. <laughs> so what happens is, one thing leads to another, and uh, Joy and Sadness are both shot out of the mind. So you leave... The control center of the mind. Yeah. So uh, they are left in the, in the barren wastelands of memories, long-term memories, you know, like that. And there's a giant, basically like a Grand Canyon, and that's called the memory dump. So whenever you want to forget something... You throw it in the memory dump. If you're me, it's everyone's phone number and name. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happens is, is that while they're gone, you've got fear, disgust, and uh, anger. Trying to run things. Trying to run things. With no joy. <laughs> basically gives you a brooding teenager, you know, like or an 11-year-old. But, you know, just someone who doesn't really know what's going on. Who yeah, can't... she's upset. She doesn't know why she's upset. She just knows she's upset. But things have changed. Not everything's happy anymore. And so, on their journey to try to get back to the control center... They meet, uh, well, they meet Riley's imaginary friend, Bing Bong. Bing Bong. <laughs> Voiced by Richard Kind. Uh, part cotton candy. Part cotton candy, part elephant, part cat, and cat. a little bit of dolphin. Yeah. So, uh, Perfect for a three-year-old to make up. Exactly. <laughs> so the the idea is that you got to get back before things get worse. Yeah. And so without ruining much, that's kind of where I'll stop. Yeah. This film is probably one of the most brilliant films Pixar has ever done. It's amazingly creative. Yeah. It's so, it, it, we're going to era nowadays where everything's a remake, everything's a sequel, everything's from a book. And this is just so refreshing to have something that's completely 100% unique. By the way, this is my wife, Kat. We didn't introduce her. I think we've met before. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I'm watching this film, and I got, to, you know, a week or so ago, uh, we aired the interview with Pete Doctor, and he's right. Oh, yeah. You can watch this film on three different levels for every age group. Kids can watch it for the vibrant colors mm -hmm. and the wacky characters and, you know, and Bing Bong. Then teenagers and, and around that era, you know, that can age relate group, to it. can be like, this is why I'm feeling this way. Yeah. Like, you know, okay, not everything does have to be happy and it's okay to be sad, you know? And parents can, two different things, I remember feeling that way. Yeah, and I, now I know how my kid is going to feel. And now I know why my kid's behaving this way. And we know for a fact that all age groups can l like the movie because we brought all age groups. Like we did. Literally 30 people. I have a giant <laughs> family. I brought them all. They all loved it. The only person who didn't cry was my sister, Karen, I love you, but you're a Vulcan. Everyone loved this movie from the two-year-olds <laughs> to the 60-year-olds. Everyone. It's true. I mean, like, I haven't really met anybody. And even if she didn't cry, she still liked it. I yeah. mean, I really haven't met one person who didn't like this film. And as we we stand right now, this is about, we're about beginning of July, around-ish. So half the year is over. There's no way so far that this thing's not winning Best Animated Film. And I would be shocked if it wasn't nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. I mean, it really? deserves to be. Oh, easily. Yeah. Easily. If you That's get 10, point. if the, if the rec, no, not the record, but the limit is 10 films, and you're going to tell me that right now, there's three films I think right now I can think that would give four stars to this year so far. There may be some other ones, but it'd be Ex Machina, oh, Mad yeah. Max, oh, Mad Max, yeah, and Inside Out. And so yeah. if you're going to tell me from now till December 31st that there's going to be seven films or 10 films better, better yeah. than these three, then, then I'm looking forward to the next six months because... This is top-notch filmmaking. Yeah. Pete Doctor, you have made me cry three times now in the theater. It's just Disney in general. The first thing I said when that movie was over, I was like, freaking Disney. <laughs> Every time. Grown, grown adults well, cry their eyes out, and then you leave loving it, and then you want to see it again, and you're going to buy it, and you're going to rewatch it over and over and over. And here's the thing, though. Because Pixar, Pixar used to be the studio that set the standard. They made everybody else be better, mm -hmm. or at least try to be better. Yeah. Then, I mean, I, I love you. I love you, Pixar. Don't take this the wrong way. But it's been a little rough patch for the past couple of ones. Because Monsters University, while good, and that's how you make a prequel, I didn't really want a prequel. Yeah. Before that was Brave. Good. Pretty. I've watched it once. So Bra obviously yeah, Brave I, I, felt more like um, a DreamWorks kinda, movie. Kind of. Kind of. It's not really what I wanted. And before that was well, the one I'll forgive you for, which was Cars 2. 
We're not going to talk about it. I get yourself toys for it. It's their highest selling franchise. <laughs> I mean, they have franchise. a Cars Land. They needed a couple Cars movies to back that up. I get it. But Little boys love this, is, this is Pixar returning to home. Mm -hmm. This is Pixar being what Pixar is known to do, which is be original, be creative, and be emotional. Yes. And it's got everything in this film. You can see where we're probably going with this. There's no way that I'm not giving this thing four stars. Four, by far. It's it's so... I've said two things. Wildly original and wildly creative. Mm -hmm. It makes me laugh. It makes me cry. It makes me... It's like, thank you for making me realize I have emotions again. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you, as a critic, you sit there going like... Here we go again, you know. But and as a critic too, um, you saw this movie twice, didn't you? See it like a month and a half ago. A month and a half ago. If a critic sees a movie twice in the theater, you know he likes it. <laughs> and we well, don't waste our time. I was actually skeptical because the emotions are there's only one positive emotion is joy, mm -hmm. and it was anger, fear, sadness, and disgust. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And you're like, trust me, you'll love it. Trust me, it makes sense. It's, it's essentially true. And did you say there was going to be like way more? They had other, other emotions they wanted to put in there, but they got a little crowded. So they're like, let's just keep to the five basics. But it's essentially watching a child psychology 101 class. It's like, actual psychology. Of you're going to learn things. And then also, but in a fun, creative way. I mean, like, no joke. Um, and I'm not the first person to say this. It should be shown in schools. You think? Oh, yes. I think they should easily show this to, like, 10, 11-year-olds. In school and be like, this, it's okay. It's okay to be sad. I want to talk about so much more of this movie, but again, we don't want to spoil it. It's just, we're not even talking about going deep into the creativeness of it. It's just, and it's, the whole journey, they, they go, and it's just, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Just well, see it. I, I, just go see it. That's all I can say is please go see Inside Up. Support this film. Make it better. I know right now, as we say this, we're living in a world where Jurassic World is destroying everything. Go see Inside Up. Inside, Inside out. out. Inside Out. <laughs> Inside Up doesn't exist. <laughs> I know you're mixing his movies together. Right? So there you go. Four stars, both sides. We can't stress it enough. Go see Inside Out. That'll do it for this episode of Big Movie Mouth Off, and we will catch you next time. Go see Inside Out. <laughs>